Terahedron is an indie 3D tower defense game that was released a few days ago for the PC. Unlike others, Terahedron has three axis tracks where the track path moves in three dimensions, so unlike other tower defense games where the track is locked to a 2D plane. Terahedron also features co-op multiplayer and programmable turrets and an 8-bit soundtrack by random. It's available from mcro.org. Uh, this video looks at the development process of the game. Uh, this first scene shows the game as it is today. Uh, so the levels are constructed from a grid of cubes and at certain places uh, you can build turrets or other platforms. Uh, targets come in waves along the marked path and destroying them earns points that you can spend on new turrets and each wave is more difficult than the last. I created this game in 10 weeks um, with the help of a few friends who tested and helped the design. Um, I was working 60 to 80 hour weeks um, but it was still a very short amount of time to produce a PC game, particularly as when starting there was no fixed idea about the game was meant to be and really this fixed idea only started to emerge kind of halfway through the development process. A crucial stage was making an early prototype and testing unique features. In this case, the most important a unique feature was the concept of three axis tower defense. It was the idea of having 3D tracks. Uh, so I made this, um, it was developed in uh, three or four days and it's a blue ribbon. Targets travel along that path. Um, the red blocks are where you can build the turrets. Or on the red block you can also build more red blocks. So there's this kind of concept of infrastructure working into it as well. Um, and I wanted to see if this could work. It, I needed to do the, the bare essentials to explore the idea. Uh, so these tracks are procedurally generated. And they're generated from, I think it was, eight different uh, pieces of track. There was a straight ahead piece, uh, up, down, a left, a right, etc. And they were arranged, strung together in random order based on a seat. Um, and this helped develop the concept. I started to learn a lot about what made a good 3D track. Um, a mistake I probably made was getting carried away and starting to work on the third renderer. This renderer shows multiple main light sources and some fogging and also supporting um, unlimited point lights which are shown in this video. Working on a renderer was definitely something to do much later in the game but it let me realise that this didn't suit the game. Uh, it was completely overkill for the style, it was unnecessarily demanding on hardware and frankly it just didn't look right for a very relaxed, simple, um, very approachable tower defense game. Um, but this was okay because I needed to focus on gameplay anyway so I took a step back and I went back to um, the more uh, basic renderer which here you can see I've added shadows but otherwise it's as it was before. I've made a couple of models for uh, turrets um, but otherwise it was, it was kind of the same. Um, I think the next stage I reached was that I had been playing with procedural levels for a while and I decided that computer generated levels uh, were quite interesting, they were fun, uh, it kind of gave you an unlimited amount of gameplay but at the same time I'd started to feel I understood what made a good and a bad 3D track. So I decided that artist directed tracks uh, was the way forward. Um, and I'd also been reading, at the time, um, Juiced Van Dongen's blog posts on art and games and how most game styles either draw from cartoons or realism and how perfectly suitable uh, inspiration is in other places and in, in his case he was pushing the idea of modern art. Uh, I liked Kalinsky and I tried exploring abstract colourful landscapes as a setting for a defence track. The results were interesting and I think that if I'd kept with it, I would have produced something that worked. But I decided to change direction, as the scene seemed too visually confusing. Um, this stage was actually really disheartening because 
uh, it worked much better in my head and I'd really worked hard at it and it just hadn't worked in the end and the results just weren't good enough and it made me step back and really think hard about what a tower defense track should be. I wanted something where it was clear how to play and so I decided to draw the visual style from the gameplay rather than separately considering it as something else. Um, and so I came up with this style. It's a grid of cubes showing the path and with set attachment points for turrets. It was simple, clean, fairly colourless and easy to understand. The player knew where to look. Um, it was also really fun to create and play with making these levels. Although my pipeline was a bit long, um, I would model the environments in Google SketchUp. Then I'd export to 3D Max where I would make bake the light maps, I'd export to the correct format, um, I would mark out the paths for the targets, I'd mark out where the turrets could attach, and I'd also have to generate the physical volumes by hand uh, using bounding boxes. In all, each level was defined by eight different files, which if I was doing it again, I'd put the effort in early and make it more integrated, more self-generating, maybe even include an editor. Reaching the point where I was comfortable with the graphical style really helped, because I was probably only halfway through the game at this stage, um, I didn't know this, but uh, I could then focus on creating better gameplay, balancing and adding features. The methodology for creating the game really changed, where I had a much better map of what the game was to be. There was much less in terms of creating concepts and designing systems but mostly uh, now creating and implementing features. I would test every day or two with friends who acted as gameplay designers and they would suggest ideas, they would suggest features, they'd be really critical on the changes I'd done and sometimes they'd just suggest obvious things that no one thought of yet. Uh, this let me really develop quickly where I'd always have a list of things that I'd want to have ready for the next testing session. I have friends who have put in a huge amount of effort and time into helping design the game but having one person who's just working on the game all day meant that I could just get on with getting everything done. There was little to coordinate, I would just focus on the next feature and just keep moving forward. This is the end of the video. I hope that some people will find this useful and thanks for watching.